Hello and welcome back to this top-down zombie shooter tutorial. So next thing we need to do is be able to fire. So to fire we're going to need a graphic of a bullet. So first thing we're going to do is upload a bullet sprite and again you can find one of these on YouTube no problem. Um, it's not cut out so not a big deal or you can just go to costumes. As long as you've got this fill um, transparency one selected here just in the fill box you can literally click on the paint bucket tool and in one click boom it's transparent so really handy next thing just like before we're going to have to make sure it's centered and pointing the right way so we just select it and we need to drag that in over to here make sure it's in the right place and then we'll just want to Actually, that's probably all right. We might need to flip the horizontal at some point, but I think that's okay at the moment. I'm going to flip it now. Right, there we go. So we've now got our bullet. Perfect. So <clears throat> first thing we're going to have to do is we obviously don't want it showing all of the time. So we go back to the code section and we say when green flag clicked, hide. Because, you know, it only we only want it to appear basically if we're going to actually, you know, fire it. So you'll find hide under looks just there. Next off we're going to start writing some code to get this sorted. So the first thing we're going to want to do is find when I start as a clone which is down here and we're going to want clones because we don't just want one object we want to be able to fire multiple times. This is a really handy way to do it. So when I start as a clone we're going to have show because you know we're going to want it to you know be on the board now and we're going to want it to go to the position starting position so in our case that is shooter so if we click here and in the drop down it will be whatever you've named your main character as i've named him shooter so it will go there now and i want it to point in the direction that i'm aiming so i want it to point towards my mouse pointer so again quite a handy little trick so let's just grab hold of that so point towards mouse pointer and next we need it to obviously move because you know we need to fire the bullet so we're going to move that forward in this case 30 steps and then we need it to keep going until basically it touches the edge because it's going to be off the screen so let's go and find a repeat until next and we're going to have touching edge which is under sensing so we can drop that in there and just choose edge and then we just want it to go off screen so it's not just sort of hanging about on the edge of the screen. So we're going to move it forward a little bit more. So just move it forward 10 or 15 steps. That will take it off the edge of the screen so you know it's no longer there. And we don't want him to be able to just continue firing you know, a whole stream of bullets because that will be unrealistic. So we're going to put a very, very little sort of weight in here, sort of 0.01 seconds. And finally, once he's sort of gone off the edge of the screen, we delete that clone so we can sort of generate our next clone um, to start up. Now, the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to receive a broadcast. So we're going to have to have an event that if it happens, you know, it triggers another event. So that's broadcasting it here in um, Scratch. So we're going to set that up over on the shooter piece of code and then we'll come back here to finish off the code on the bullet. So now we need some way of firing our bullet. So again, we're going to use um, when green flag clicked. So whenever the game's clicked, um, start. And then we're going to need a forever because we always want to check if you know the person wants to fire or not. And then an if inside of the forever loop. And then we need to check is the mouse down because we can use that to fire our bullets. So it's going to check if the mouse is down, if it is. We're going to create a new event, so we're going to make a broadcast now. And we're going to give that a sensible name. So make a new message. I'm going to call it fire, because that kind of makes sense. Click OK. And again, we're just going to put a little bit of a weight in here so that you know we're not getting you know completely sort of uh, bullet fire going off in a constant stream. So we're going to wait probably about half a second. You can change this to sort of change your rate of fire as well, which is quite nice. And now we just need to marry that in over to our bullet code and just say when I receive fire. So when I receive fire, 
we need it to create a clone of itself. So let's just get that one, control, there we go. So that will basically create the clone and then it starts as a clone and then this then runs. So let's see if that now works. So that disappears, which is good. I click and hey presto, we have working bullet fire. And the nice thing is I can sort of walk around, shoot and I can turn. Because we set this up to follow the mouse position, it just works straight off the um, straight out of the tin. Um, so yeah, and I can fire quite quickly. If I want to fire more quickly, I can change those um, those weight settings. But you know, this is quite nice. So I'm going to leave that as it is. Now, finally, just to wrap this tutorial up, just to make it a little bit more interesting, what we'll also want is um, a gunshot sound. So again, I can just go to sounds, and again, I just went online, found a um, gunshot sound and uploaded it. Um, Scratch can handle sort of WAVs and MP3s, but WAVs tend to work better. So I recommend going to find a WAV format, so a wave sound um, for your gunshot, because it just, they just work, they're less glitchy. Um, so we upload that, and then when we've got that sound, we can then just go ahead and implement the code for it. So whilst that's importing, We'll just have a look at the code. So that's our gunshot uploaded. It can take a few seconds, but we've got that now and we can test it. There you go. That sounds good. So now, as promised, we can go to the code. And this is just a really simple little bit of code. We can say when I receive fire and then under sound, we can play the gunshot sound. So now if we just test it, we now can fire move around, fire, and the bullets go in the right direction. So yeah, that's perfect. So thank you for watching today's tutorial. We'll carry on next time and make some zombies um, to shoot. So see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.